Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about feedback, how to prevent it, and actually how to fix it if you come across some feedback when you're mixing. Now, this is actually part of a brand new X32 course that I just released called the X32 Fundamentals course, where I go through my favorite five fundamentals that I believe that any audio engineer should learn to be able to be excellent at mixing on the Behringer X32. Now, I believe that this video is going to be helpful for a lot of people out there. So I wanted to bring this video for you for free on YouTube today. If you want to check out more about my course, you can visit the link down in the description below, or you can go to drewbrashler.com for more information. But I hope you enjoy this video. Now, feedback is something that's always going to happen if you have a microphone out on stage and you turn it up loud enough. Unfortunately, there's no real way to get around that. It's always going to happen, and it's always going to be something that you are going to be fighting and struggling with. Now, with that being said, there's a couple things that we can do to prevent some feedback. Now, I have my speakers actually facing directly towards me, and so if I go and talk into this microphone, Microphone, then it's going to be directly facing towards me. And I'm actually going to show you uh, how to ring out this microphone, which is basically kind of find the frequencies that this is going to feed back at. And what we can do at the very end is actually get this microphone louder with those EQ settings than we would have without them. So a couple things to note about feedback is feedback is always going to happen either if a speaker is pointed towards that microphone or there is a lot of reverberation in the room. So if you have a lot of reverberation, basically untreated walls, then that sound is gonna come out of your speakers, hit against the walls, bounce back directly at that microphone, and that's going to create a feedback loop. Now, what is a feedback loop? Well, a feedback loop is a microphone that's going through your mixer, that's going out the speaker, and then the sound of the speaker is reaching that microphone. And so once that happens and gets loud enough, then it's going to just make a loop and get louder and louder and louder over time. So one thing that we want to minimize is the amount of sound that's coming from our main speakers to where your microphone is. So if this is a podium or if this is the main center spot on your stage, you want to make sure that your speakers are not pointed at that spot. So if you have some speakers that are on stands on either side of the stage, we want to make sure that those are far enough forward away from the speaker to be able to have the speakers pointed out in the audience, but not at the speaker where they are with the microphone. Also, if you have some floor wedges, we wanna try and minimize how much volume of this microphone is going through those floor wedges. Because if a lot of volume is coming back at that microphone, that can start to create a feedback loop. Now, the other thing is reflections in the room. And you can actually take a mirror and put it against walls. And if you can stand where that speaker is going to be speaking and you move that mirror across the wall, and if you see a reflection in that mirror of where the speakers are, then put some acoustic treatment in that spot because that's going to be a direct reflection of the speakers into that microphone. A perfect example is speakers hung and then a big beam that's maybe covered in wood in the ceiling is that ceiling beam should be covered with some acoustic treatment to prevent that bounce back of an echo off of that speaker. The next thing that we can do is use a directional microphone. So my headset microphone that I have here is an omnidirectional mic. So if I was having problems with feedback and I've already tried all the things that I'm gonna teach you today, maybe purchasing a directional microphone headset for that speaker might be a good idea to get as a directional microphone is going to pick up less acoustic noise around the speaker. So if I had a directional microphone, it would be pointing directly into my face and it would be rejecting anything that's out here. So if I had a speaker that was positioned out here, pointed towards the audience, but there was still a lot of sound coming off the back of that speaker, a directional microphone would help with that. 
So for instance, this SM57 that I have is a directional microphone. So if I'm holding this here, it's going to be rejecting anything that's behind it because this is a cardioid microphone. And if we remember, our cardioid mic rejects anything that's directly behind it. So we can teach our speakers to basically take this microphone, point it directly at that floor monitor. This works for a singer as well. Point it right towards the floor monitor and that's where they want to be holding this microphone. Now, another thing that we want to be teaching our vocalists, our singers, our preachers, our speakers, is to take this microphone and to hold it very close to their mouth. The closer that they get this microphone to their mouth, the more gain before feedback we're going to get because our voice is now louder in this microphone from it being very close. Now, let's go ahead and ring out this microphone. So I'm going to turn this up, and I have a separate volume on Matrix 1 and 2 just for the speakers that are sitting here in front of me. And I'm going to kind of talk in this mic with it pointed towards these speakers. So here we go. Check, 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 check. Okay, so now I can hear this microphone coming through these speakers, but my goal is to get this to feedback. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press view on my equalizer section. And what's great about view on the EQ is that there is a built-in RTA, which is showing me what frequencies are being excited, what frequencies are louder than the others. So if I was to whistle, we can see that that tone is slightly below 2K. If I was to whistle a little bit uh, of a lower note, that's 1K. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn this up until the point where it starts to feed back. And I'm gonna be very careful of this. So check, 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 check. Okay, so I hear a little bit of feedback happening. Check, check, check. And so that's at 6K. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember that that was at 6K. And so that was slightly above negative 10 here on this mic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go grab my EQ. I'm going to take it to 6K. And I am going to go to a narrow bandwidth. And I'm going to turn it down. So next, we're going to listen in on this and see if we can get any more feedback happening. So... Check, 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 check. Ooh. Ooh, there we go. There it is, 400. So what I'm gonna do is, while this is sitting here in feedback, I'm going to go, ooh, that was loud. Where is that? That's at 8K, so, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna go to up to 8K and, and remove that real quick. So I'm gonna go to my bell curve, and I'm gonna go to a PEQ, as that's a narrower, uh, tighter thing, and that was up at 8K, and we're going to go narrow, and we're gonna cut that out. So there we go, check, 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 and then the other one was sitting at 400. Oh, it was at 8K, not 10. Okay, so there we go. So now there was that thing at 400. There it is. So I'm gonna go narrow bandwidth and I'm going to remove this. There we go. And so, oh, see now there's a little bit more. So what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm going to go and split the difference and go wider on this bandwidth. So we're gonna do that. So now, while I have changed the tone of this microphone, I can actually raise this up even more. So check, 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 check. Still that 400, and now it's at 10K. So what I'm gonna do here is take my high band, and I'm going to go split the difference and make this a little bit wider. Check, 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 check. Okay, so what we've done is I've been able to get an additional 6 dB of gain on this microphone before it really starts feeding back. And so honestly, it's a little bit loud in here with me just talking like this, kind of pointing this microphone at the speakers. And so what I can do now is I can turn it back down to negative 10 and I can be talking nice and loud. I got this thing cranked in here. 
But the benefit is I don't have the feedback as I did before. So if I actually take this EQ and turn it off, I'm gonna end up getting some feedback. So I'm gonna turn this down and I'm gonna start talking again. And already there's some frequencies that I can hear that are ringing. So, ooh, there it is. So really, I was feeding back at negative nine, but once I turn my EQ on, I can actually go up louder on this microphone before it starts feeding back. So when you're adjusting this feedback and adjusting this ringing that's happening on these microphones, you do have to just be careful to not change the tone of the channel as much. So you kind of have to choose between feedback reduction and tone of the microphone, as this microphone sounds better without this EQ adjustment, uh, especially if you're feeding online with the same EQ, that any of these EQ adjustments are being applied to anything that you send it to. So that's the only downside of doing this. But having no feedback is going to be less distracting than having feedback. So a microphone that has a little bit degraded tone, but no feedback is not going to be as distracting as a microphone that sounds great, but is always getting feedback. Feedback is always going to be distracting. So using these tools of placing your speakers correctly, adding acoustic treatment, using EQ to tune that frequencies out that are feeding back, these are all things that are going to help you prevent feedback in your room. The very last thing that I would say is on this microphone is to use a gate. When I'm not talking on this microphone, I want this gate to be applying muting to this mic. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on here. And I'm going to set this threshold up to the point where when I'm not talking, it is applying gain reduction. So I'm going to go ahead and take my hold time down and my release time a lot faster. And so at this point, this is a little bit too aggressive of gating. And so I'll go ahead and bring this down. Hey, check, check, check. And so this is too much of a range on this microphone for my liking. So what I would end up setting this to is about 9 dB down. And so all it's going to do is when I turn this up now is it's going to apply gain reduction to this microphone of 9 dB whenever I'm not talking. So we can go ahead and test that. So check, check, check. And so when I'm not talking, it mutes the microphone, but it doesn't mute the microphone enough to make it sound unnatural. But that's almost the same thing as me taking my finger and whenever I stop talking, turning it down by nine. Check, check, check. That's what the gain reduction that's doing on this gate is applying to this microphone. So using all these tools, you should be able to go and really tackle some of that feedback that's happening. Again, reducing the amount of volume coming from speakers back towards that microphone, teaching your musicians or your speakers correct microphone placement, getting that microphone nice and close into their mouth or voice, and then applying EQ settings and reducing the reflections in the room. Using all four of those things are really going to help you get rid of some of the feedback that's happening in your room. Now that brings me to the conclusion of this video about feedback. It's going to be something that all of us are going to have at some point in time, but how you handle it in the moment is going to separate a distraction environment to a distraction-free environment. Again, if you want to check out more about my X32 Fundamentals course, go to the link in the description below or visit drewbrashler.com for more information on that. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I would make for you in the future, drop those in the comment section below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. Otherwise, have a great day.